Hey, good morning, guys. Um, doing my last tag pick hunt before the um, uh, one week of no pick hunting challenge that I started in a previous video. Check out that. Uh, but yeah, uh, today is Friday, and uh, I don't think I'll have too much time to pick hunt on this weekend. Got a bunch of plans. So uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm almost relieved that uh, there's no restock, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna flip through those. This is obviously not, not good. What was our last Q case? All right, that's just been here, so. But yeah, I'll talk to you about that more in the car. Oh, look at that. These are just popping up everywhere now, which is good. Really would suck if people were just scalping those constantly. All right. There's a Power Rangers. Oh, cool. They're re-releasing the MMPR stuff. That's cool. Is that the Green Ranger? No, that's a uh, Galaxy. I'd probably pick up a sealed uh, MMPR Green Ranger just to have one sealed for obvious reasons. Huh, these are still here. Give him a scarf, McFarlane. Damn it. What's this? Ooh. Nice. What was his name? Nin, 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 Lucario. I remember his amiibo was impossible to find. All right. What's up, Bakugis? Pile of uh, plushies. Buzz. <clears throat> All right. Okay, guys. So heading over to another Target. Um, this one had nothing. But uh, yeah, let me uh, tell you guys a little bit more about the challenge I'm doing. Uh, first, first and foremost, I'm doing it. Uh, it's okay if no one else does it, although I already had uh, at least three or four people say that challenge accepted. So it'll be interesting, man. I can't wait to hear from them uh, at the end of next week, see if they did it. But uh, the challenge is uh, basically you just don't go peg hunting. You don't go to Target. You don't go to Walmart. You don't go to uh, any other store that is selling Hot Wheels. Um, now, you can go to these stores if you need to buy other stuff. You don't have to, like, <laughs> like shun away from uh, if, you're, if you're walking by the toy aisles or whatever. Uh, you know, you don't have to, like, avert your eyes. You can take a, take a peek down the aisle, but you can't go peg hunting which means you can't freaking go and look through the pegs. You can't go look through the Hot Wheels. You can't like flip through them. That's the point of this. The whole point of this is uh, just take a break for one week. That's why it's a challenge. It's challenging. So um, if you want to challenge yourself a little bit, if you want to see if you're stronger than your addiction, because uh, technically it is an addiction if, you know, especially this challenge is probably the most important for those that go peck hunting every day. Um, you know, <clears throat> it, it's just something that if you do it consciously and uh, you succeed for that whole week, then you can actually clearly think about, you know, what am I doing? Do I still want to keep doing this? Uh, you know, uh, do, uh, does my hobby control me or do I control my hobby? You know, the same thing that goes for does my collection own me or do I own my collection? Uh, this isn't to like make people stop collecting. That, that's not at all. Like, and, and if anything, it'll help you learn about, you know, how strong your infliction or whatever is, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully more of you guys will accept the challenge. And I really hope that you guys will make videos, uh, you know, saying that I'm taking this challenge. Uh, you know, uh, here's Monday. I mean, hell, if it makes it easier for you, make daily videos, you know, like day two. 
of no peg hunting Hot Wheels challenge, you know? Day three, day four, and just tell people how you feel, you know? Um, I think it's important. I think it might help some people, you know, if, if more people do this challenge and make videos, especially. Uh, you don't have to make videos, uh, you know, I would just love to hear from you at the end of the week uh, to see how you're doing. You know, uh, but I think it's big enough and important enough uh, that people will want to make some videos, especially you YouTuber guys that, um, you know, you kind of have to go and pick hunt every day to make videos. Uh, I think this might help some of you, uh, you know, to kind of get your priorities straight and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, I'm, I'm fully expecting some of the people that are taking the challenge to maybe, you know, not really even last uh, a few days, you know. Uh, it is holiday season. There are restocks, you know, collectors have that instilled fear of uh, missing out. You know, they're like, oh man, during this week, I'm gonna miss out on super treasure hunts. I'm gonna miss out on this and that. Uh, even if you do, man, that's the thing with peg hunting. You don't know. I mean, you know, uh, you, you just have no idea if you're gonna miss out or not. Uh, this whole week might be a drought. There might not be any Hot Wheels. There might be a ton of Hot Wheels and you missed out. How big of a deal is that? Is it really that big of a deal? I don't know. Uh, I'll find out, you know, when it's, when it's intentional, it means you're controlling shit. You're controlling yourself, your, um, desires, you know, you're, you're telling yourself, I'm in freaking control of this and I can do a week, you know? Uh, some of you have got back to me and you're like, you know, oh, I only hunt on weekends and, you know, I was like, well, don't hunt that weekend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't hunt this weekend or don't hunt next weekend. If that's when you hunt, uh, challenge yourself. Because if you're just hunting on weekends, that you're technically not going to be uh, peck hunting for two weeks. Because, you know, a weekend is in between two weeks. <laughs> you know. So, uh, yeah, guys. Uh, that's the challenge. No peck hunting for Hot Wheels or any kind of die cast uh, in stores or online. Uh, you can go look at stuff, you know. Um, at the very worst, you know, uh, you can look at stuff, but don't buy anything. But the whole point is not to go to stores physically, not to take that drive where you're going, okay, I'm going to go peg hunting. That's the whole point of it. Take a break. It's about taking a break, a mental declutter uh, for you to kind of uh, reassess stuff. And like I suggested in the official challenge video, um, Take that week to look at your collection. Look through your stuff. And you're going to want to because you, you're not going to buy new stuff. You're going to want to turn your attention on the stuff that you have. Go through your bins of Hot Wheels. Go through your collection that you have on the wall. Uh, reassess, like, do I really need to collect all of these? Or should I just focus on certain things? Should I just focus on supers? Should I just focus on certain cars? You know, like Mustangs or, uh, you know... Whatever, whatever the heck uh, tickles your pickle, you know? Uh, basically, just go through that stuff. And maybe, you know, since it is holiday season, look at stuff you might want to donate, you know? And you don't uh, necessarily need to donate it to um, the toy drive I'm doing, the toy drive for Ukrainian kids. Um, you can just go and donate it to your local charities, man. Um, it's, about, it's about you. It's about what you can do. So, uh, yeah. Uh, kill some time by going through your stuff. Uh, pick out what you want to keep. Pick out what you don't want to keep. Maybe you want to sell some of the stuff. You know, it's fine. Uh, figure out what you want to sell and then try to sell it or whatever or trade it with people. And, uh, you know, so that you can collect more focused on what you want to collect. Not every freaking thing that comes out. So yeah, don't be uh, don't be a slave to uh, Mattel, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, uh, or whatever uh, company that you uh, like. So yeah, take that week. Um, that's the challenge. Take a week. Stay away from Hot Wheels as far as buying them, as far as hunting for them. Uh, no Hot Wheels hunting. Uh, just enjoy yourself, man. Go for a walk. Figure out maybe you have some other hobbies you might want to do. You know. Uh, but don't intentionally go to stores to go peg hunting and that's exactly what I'm doing as you can see I've arrived to the next uh, Target and you guys were just with me from the last target to this target 
It was seven minutes. I have a lot of targets and Walmarts within 15 minute drive of each other. Uh, there's another target that's also seven minutes away from here. We'll see, I might go there uh, just because uh, I have to make this little uh, pig hunting video and spread this message of uh, for you guys to uh, take the challenge or not. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, also, you know, that's the thing. Uh, today's Friday, you're gonna watch this video today. Go pick hunt, go pick hunt this Friday, pick hunt this weekend. Uh, get it out of your system, get yourself ready and um, take, take a week off. All right, let's go to this target, see what's not there. Okay, I'm at the other target. Um, yeah, this is uh, looking more and more like a easy challenge. So here we go, we have nothing here. I mean, this is all probably about to get restocked, and uh, it's all gonna get restocked this coming week. <sighs> this is why it's a challenge. Cha -cha 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 -cha. Yeah, well, there's nothing here. Let's see, Ultra Hots. Very cool. Ladies creeping on me. Let's see, what's all this? Oh, they're getting rid of old displays. That means they're putting up new ones. No FHOs. Schwartz's. Oh, hey now. Lego, Harry Potter, Hogwarts. Speed Champions are 20 bucks. I got a bunch from Aaron, so I'm not buying any until I get those and put them together unless they're already put together. We have a bunch of uh, Target exclusives pops. I just recently moved all of mine and Maggie's pops that we kept uh, from over the years and years of collecting them. Uh, we only have like maybe 30 together. Most of them are Maggie's because uh, she has a whole bunch of Harry Potter and Doctor Who stuff. Uh, my personal pops, I probably have like six, seven, something like that. Mm. If I was an asshole, I'd spit on him right now. <laughs> What's up, my customers and shoppers and my eBay freaking customers and people that are buying stuff from me? Y'all's is here. Merry Christmas. Buy my shit. I'm a true collector. Okay. Let's go to one more target. For y'all. Alright, well, <clears throat> there you go, guys. Uh, target is definitely getting reset for uh, stuff coming this week. I can almost guarantee you. So, I know I am talking as if I am discouraging you, especially those of you locals. Um, and I am because it's a challenge and uh, no, none of you have to take this challenge um, that's why it's a challenge <laughs> but it's definitely helping to uh, go to these stores and not see anything on the pegs or shelves it's kind of like almost like fuel to not do it you know discouragement is just as powerful as encouragement copyright Nas but uh yeah um just like you saw me uh do a little bit uh of my y'all skit um just wanted to explain that one I made a video which was uh, actually pretty popular with a bunch of you guys uh where I was uh acting as uh, a fella named y'alls and uh he's named y'alls because he's kind of represents um <clears throat> y'all by y'all i mean like uh the peg hunters that are resellers the ones that are there's nothing wrong with resellers so people always get me wrong man uh i'm talking about the ones that kind of lie to their uh viewers you know uh ones that go peg hunting pretty much every day and they keep uh saying that you know they're they're a true collector and they're hunting for themselves but all throughout their videos, they're pushing their merch, they're uh, 
telling you that they will be having sales either on eBay or on or uh, whatnot, which is very popular now. Uh, nothing wrong with any of that. Nothing wrong with reselling. Uh, the problem is with people that uh, say that they're a collector. And when they're going out on their daily videos, um, peg hunting for this, pulling out sealed cases all the time, or just uh, somehow stumbling on full pegs. Now, I've done tons of peg hunting videos. I have stumbled on sealed cases from time to time. Uh, that was either pure luck or me just knowing the, the timing of when they restock, because when you go to stores enough, you kind of learn it. Um, but yeah, uh, it would be interesting to, uh, for some of you fans of these uh, peck hunter collectors, ask them, hey man, can I see your collection video? I want to see your collection. Because uh, I'll bet you that it's not a collection room, it's an eBay stock room. <laughs> Am I wrong? Anyway, I'm not talking about everyone, I'm not talking about anyone in particular at all trust me i i've watched a ton of peg hunting videos i know a bunch of peg hunters that make videos on youtube uh, and i actually give my respect to the ones that do peg hunt daily and they do resell but they don't they don't act shady about it they're just like yeah man uh, i have an ebay store or i do whatnot sales uh, i also collect a little bit uh, Nothing wrong with that, man. If you're honest with your viewers and you're telling them what you're doing, right on, dude. But yeah, I uh, really don't like the shady characters or people that uh, like used to peck hunt and now they think that they're above it. Uh, now, that's not why I'm quitting, uh, you know, peck hunting. Well, peck hunting videos. I've, you guys know I made a video about that. Um, <laughs> but... People that now feel like they're above it and they're like, oh yeah, I'm done big hunting. And now they're just doing like either live videos where they're just sitting around talking to their viewers that they've built based on their peg hunting and their passion for collecting. Now all they're doing is sitting there doing lives uh, in front of all of their supers, in front of all of their chases, in front of all of that. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, uh, oh, I'm, I'm a collector, you know. Uh, and all these fans are basically buying their merch because that's what they say. They uh, become members, they contribute to the, these YouTubers' Patreons. And these guys have money. Uh, they get money from ad revenue from YouTube. They get money from uh, a lot of different things. Ooh, I can't park there. As a YouTuber myself, I, I know that they make money. And they constantly bitch about not having money or, oh, that's too expensive. And they're like talking about a freaking car that's like 15 bucks or eight bucks. And I'm like, that's not too expensive, dude. If you're a collector and that's the piece you want, that's not expensive at all. You buy that one piece and you're good to go. Um, but that's not why they're buying stuff. You know what I mean? They're buying stuff for different reasons. And uh, yeah, so uh, be wary, uh, you know, how some of these YouTubers transform how they change because at first they start as if they're pure, they're honest, you know, they're like, oh yeah, you know, like I, I love collecting these, this is great. And then slowly their channel changes into just like buy my merch, donate to me, send me money to my, you know, Patreon, uh, become my member, I'll make private videos for you. Now, I personally started, uh, you know, join join thing on my YouTube there's no one on there because I don't promote it or say anything it's just there in case someone wants to and uh, if I do like certain things like uh, charity things uh, where I do what do you call it uh, not raffle but uh, what's it called come on come on come on come on come on come on ten minutes later claim sales so it helps me with claim sell sales because i've watched some other youtubers do this where uh you're doing a claim sale and you're showing things and all people have to do is either go to your instagram and send you a private message saying i claim this and this but your people that have paid like 2.99 or one dollar to become a member on your channel they get dibs on the things that you're selling at the claim sale 
Uh, now, my claim sales are all for charity. They're completely uh, to help Ukraine, Ukrainian volunteers, Ukrainian people uh, in the war-stricken country. So I can't, you know, I'm not um, categorized in with the scummy YouTubers. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. You may think otherwise, but, you know, it's charity. So what am I? I'm scalping and reselling for the less fortunate. I'm such an asshole. <laughs> So yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just telling you guys, like, you know, open your eyes a little bit, and that's why I'm doing this one week no pack hunting challenge, just for you to reassess yourself, reassess your collecting habits, reassess your priorities in life, you know, like, don't make your life about collecting, you know, like, don't let it freaking rule your life, there's so much more you can do other than accumulate uh, stuff in your house, and let that stuff that you've accumulated uh, just sit there, and you just... You know, you're just so like focused on in on it that all you do is just like wait till the next time you can go pick hunt or next time you can go buy something online, you know, uh, and don't let your hobby kind of blind you to what you watch on YouTube because they influence you quite a bit, um, you know, like by their collecting habits or what they're collecting. Like, have you ever noticed that like, let's say, for example, uh, Porsche. Uh, let's say um, you're watching somebody who just collects Porsches. They love Porsches. And uh, you never really looked at Porsches. You were never like against them or anything. But you never really collected Porsches. You might have had one or two castings. But now because you're watching this particular YouTuber who's like all passionate about the Porsche, he, it's his passion. And now all of a sudden because you're watching it, you're getting hyped about his feelings. And you, you're starting to go out and look for Porsches. You're starting to collect Porsches. And then, you know, imagine one day they stop making YouTube videos and you look in your collection and you just have a wall full of Porsches and you're kind of like, why, why the fuck am I collecting Porsches? <laughs> it's just an example. It could be anything. Mustangs, uh, Lotus, whatever the fuck, man. I, I don't know. So um, uh, hopefully you guys are understanding this. Uh, I'm just kind of... Uh, this is a, a usual nostalgic peg hunting vlog where I go to a store, look at stuff, and then vlog a little bit in between the drives. So, um, yeah, these usually go for a little bit. Uh, so all I'm doing here is not telling you to, uh, you know, not have a hobby. I'm not telling you to not collect Hot Wheels or toys or whatever. I'm telling you to think critically. I'm telling you to uh, be, you know, a master of your domain. You know, uh, collect what you like. Don't get influenced by influencers. You know, most YouTubers are there because they need to make money. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong at all. My videos are monetized. I don't make that much money at all. But, um, you know, like, you're doing stuff, so you do want to get paid for it. But it's not, it's not your viewers' freaking responsibility that you make money for the videos that you make for y'all you know like what the hell uh that's the thing that you guys got to realize that a lot of these youtubers the they collected everything they already want and they pretty much have what they want so now they're kind of like uh you know i don't know what else to do with this channel so they just kind of try to manipulate you guys into giving them money for themselves there it's not for charity it's not for anything they also have other jobs some of them don't some of them make the youtube videos um just as advertisement for their online stores like whatnot or ebay or whatever uh they just want to be there that way their following can go and buy stuff from them that they go to stores and buy up and now you guys can't go and find it there because they bought it up and then they talk about scalpers and resellers in their videos and sometimes i watch these videos and i'm like it's you you're the fucking problem bro you're the one scalping and buying all this up. You're going there opening cases. You're buying all this up and you're saying that, you know, this is for you guys. It's for y'all. Like, no, dude, you are taking stuff away from the shelves and then you resell it to your viewers. You're technically scalping because that's why you're buying it. You're buying it with full intent to sell it at a markup. So... Again, nothing wrong with resellers, nothing wrong with scalpers. Well, there was a little bit wrong with scalpers, but you can't bitch about scalpers or resellers as a whole because they're just doing what they're doing. Um, I'm just telling you guys, be careful for the people that are lying to you. 
be careful on that. Like, don't let your fandom and your, uh, you know, uh, your hype for the collects, the stuff that you collect blind you, you know, like, uh, don't be a follower, you know, be, be a leader, man. Be a leader of, you know, what you collect, be a leader with your friends. Don't just be somebody's bitch. Like, I'm sorry for being so blunt, but don't be some YouTuber's bitch where you're just like, oh, I love you, man. And then like, especially people that send stuff to their YouTubers, they have it. They have money. They have a huge collection, more than most of their viewers. And you're sitting there like, oh, I love this guy. And you pack up a big ass box full of freaking Hot Wheels for this guy. Um, you send it to him, you pay 50 bucks for the shipping costs or more. And you send them, you know, 50, 100, 200 freaking castings just so they can make a video. And they're like, oh yeah, thanks Phil for sending me this video. The more the merrier, I already have five of these, but you know, seven more won't hurt. What do you think they're gonna do with all this stuff you gave them? They're gonna probably sell it. Why the hell do they need 20 of the same casting? They don't. And uh, yeah, food for thought, guys. Um, I'm just really trying to like say all these things because no one's really talking about it, especially in the Hot Wheels diecast community. Like you, you need to like, it, it's really turning into straight up just every channel is just a resale channel. Nothing wrong with it. But I remember when I first started watching, uh, you know, YouTube videos on pick hunting or customizers, they were they were showing and sharing their passion. They were showing like, yeah, man, I need to uh, like, they'll be like, I'm looking for this casting and this casting. And they'll, they'll talk about it in their car like this. They'll go to a store. They'll go and, uh, you know, search for that one or two castings that they want for their collection. Nowadays, a peg hunter video is some guy goes in there and walks out with a cart full of everything that's rare, everything that's valuable and worth money. Don't you see that there's something wrong with that? And I really don't mean to offend any YouTubers at all. I'm not talking about any specific one YouTuber, guys, at all. I watch peg hunting videos. I enjoy some of these guys. I, lo I love some of the guys that do pallet raids. It's fun to watch. Um, but that's just entertainment. But I'll bet you that these guys are... Well, I don't have to bet. I know. They're reselling. Why the hell would you hoard all this stuff of the same stuff of all the best things that are valued the most? It's not for your collection, buddy. It's not at all. Okay, chief? All right, boss? All right, pal? Yeah. So, yeah. All of you guys who watch YouTube stuff, you watch collectors, you watch peg hunters, just be wary. Uh, be wary with who you donate to. Be, you know, be cautious on who you send Hot Wheels to. And uh, why not just send your box of Hot Wheels to a small YouTuber? <laughs> a small YouTuber. Uh, like somebody who only has like a hundred subs or less. Or someone who's under a thousand subs. Why not uh, make a box for this small YouTuber who's just starting stuff? Imagine like the excitement this person's gonna get. A boy or a girl. Imagine how excited they're gonna get by, Oh man, I just got a box in the mail full of Hot Wheels. They're gonna be happy, they're gonna enjoy it. They're gonna probably keep all of those in their collection. If anything, they'll trade some of them for more stuff for their collection. And they're gonna get they're gonna get inspired to be positive. They're gonna be like, oh my god, the diecast community is nice. It's uh it shares with me. It, you know, like I'm gonna do the same thing. You're showing an example to someone new instead of you know, they're just gonna watch other YouTubers freaking hoard stuff to resell. And they're going to be like, well, that's what YouTube peg hunting is all about. It's all about getting everything away from everyone else so I can hoard it all and resell it. I don't know. Hopefully I'm making sense. Anyway, let's go to Walmart over here. <sighs> Disappoint your mom locally. <laughs> all right, let's have a look-see. Yeah, that's horrible. No one's buying these at all. So, some Russians up in here. But um, here we go. I really like this car, but I bought the silver one with the voodoo design. So I don't need it at all. Looks like that's all they have here, geez. 
<laughs> Wayland. Nice. Chevy Nova SS. They're all Chevy Nova. So that means there was like three cases here <laughs> and someone got a... I mean, it's all the same stuff. That's crazy. Wait, what's that? Clipper? Mustang. Jeez. Alright. So that's about it there. Alright. There you go. Friday at... What do you call them? Friday at little retail stores. Ooh. Oh wait, he almost sounds like that. Yeah, that one sounds, uh, let's see. Yeah, see, ARG. Listen to this guy. See, that one's like, Argh. Oh, finally. <laughs> That's fantastic, man. I finally found the the skull that gave up. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Dino Island. Ugh. I love it. I'm sure it's because the battery is dying or whatever, but All right, can I please freaking leave? All right. So, there you go, guys. As you can see, nothing here. Uh, I am going to go to one more target. I'm gonna go to the Oxford Valley Mall one just because it's again seven minutes away from here. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can imagine I'm pretty lucky to like live in the tri-state area where there's just target after target, Walmart after Walmart. It's uh, very easy to to get hooked on peg hunting and toy hunting and stuff like that. Uh, before I did uh, peg hunting and Hot Wheels hunting, I did a whole lot of toy hunting, man. I went, uh, I did the same thing. I went to the stores very often, if not every day, made videos. Actually, didn't make too many videos about toy hunting, but I did, I did a bunch, you know, toy hunting videos. They're, they're all here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, jeez. Yeah, I, uh, I really don't like this camera mount. It's uh, it's awful. It it's way too bulky and big, and uh, it doesn't stay locked, and it makes my mirror freaking fall over. Uh, it's awful. But anyway, I need to find something that mounts on my dashboard. Sorry, Maggie. <laughs> it's not your fault. It just sucks. Uh, it was so promising at first. <laughs> Uh, all right, anyway guys, so uh, yeah, let's go to the next target. Uh, let's see. What's the next topic? I wanted to discuss with y'all um, By the way, I don't really care like um, if people are if people want to be gullible enough to uh, be somebody's bitch on YouTube and you know um, Support them give them their money and give them stuff for their collection that they don't freaking need in any way and uh, yeah, um, hopefully some of you will take me up on, I hate this thing, on, you know, if you want to actually send something to someone, send it to a small YouTuber, send it to someone who can use it, uh, who'll be happy with it, and not just someone who puts it aside on their big old freaking pile of shit and says, the more the merrier, thank you guys, I love you all. You don't love nobody, you don't even know the name of the person who sent you that stuff. <laughs> So yeah, <clears throat> again, no beef with anyone in particular. Uh, I do watch a lot of uh, Hot Wheels stuff. It's the hobby, you know, a lot of us watch a lot of YouTubers that either peck hunt or do whatever the hell uh, on their diecast channels. But, uh, oh shit, all right, thank you, fellas. Mm, all right, so yeah, uh, boss. Yeah, the last target. Let's see how it goes. No more pack hunting after this store. Ah. For a week. God. It was definitely uh, 
too late. There was just a dude in here looking through these. Walked away with about four, so I assume there was a Fast and the Furious thing there. <laughs> uh, a case. A A A. There you go. Mustang. Very nice. So they had a good delivery of a case in here. There's the clip. The only one that was cool was the first one they had. The bare metal one. That was awesome. So yeah, nothing else good here. I'm just looking for the Dima Maxima drift car, the red one. That's it. Just want to wheel swap that. They definitely don't have a dump bin for some reason. Probably because they don't have enough cars. Yeah, Renault. Okay, there is something I actually have to get, which is cat litter. Yeah, that's my boy right there. Jeez, 2050. That's insane. <sighs> I do this for you, Houdini. Freaking clump litter hunting. All right, so I am totally over the uh, uh, mount for my camera. It's it's done, dude. So no more driving and talking until I get a new mount. So that's a relief for y'all. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, got me a clump and seal. Got some uh, laundry detergent. Got uh, dude wipes to wipe the butthole. Got some tea and cat food over there, and just like that, we're past $50. So yeah, uh, good thing I didn't find any Hot Wheels, because I'd be like, well, shit, <laughs> payday's next week. Uh, so uh, any hoozles, uh, I am going to go to uh, an Acme, so that'll be your bonus feature. I'm going to go, uh, I forgot to get a case of water, so we'll see if my Acme, whichever one I choose to go to, has any Hot Wheels for y'all to look at. Y'all. Hey, look at that. My dashboard works too. <laughs> I can't see how fast I'm going. Oh, no, I can. It's right above. Me. All right, we're good. We're good. Safety first, kids. Uh, so, yeah, guys, <clears throat> I'm still on my way to Acme because from the last Target, it's quite a drive home. <laughs> but I uh, just wanted to um, sum up what I was talking about, guys. Uh, again, you know, I'm not judging anyone's collecting habits. I'm not in any way saying that there's a wrong way to collect. Everyone has to have the right to collect anything they want, any way they want. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You can collect every single thing that comes out. You can collect, you can collect a certain thing. Um, it's all up to you. My, my only message is don't, don't be influenced. Don't be hyped by other people are kind of uh, nonchalantly using you that's all I'm trying to say here so just keep that in mind you know and collect what you like that's that's my only message here um, but yeah <sighs> just wanted to talk a little bit more about like when um, when I started collecting more so in the video games uh, action figures and Hot Wheels uh, this was, you know, over 10 years ago when I came back from college and I just wanted to, you know, I got hit with nostalgia really hard. And that's why uh, I started collecting things again, you know, just to remind myself. And, you know, I did catch myself a few times losing control, man. And that's what a lot of uh, collectors do. They kind of lose control and lose focus of their collection, you know. They, they turn their hobby into their life. And uh, to me personally, not to you, to me personally, that it just doesn't feel right, man. Um, you can't just spend your, your free time just looking for stuff to buy, you know? Consumerism, man. Consumerism, bro, you know, it's all whack. <laughs> but, you know, on a serious step, it is, man. Um, you know, don't, just don't get too hype about things. And, uh, you know, there's so much about that. But... Um, 
yeah, here's the thing. When I first started collecting again, uh, that's when I was watching YouTubers that were influencing me back into it, kind of hyping me up, going to flea markets, you know, watching them buy things. And I'm like, man, that's what I'm looking for. I want that. And, you know, and that's when I started doing similar things and making YouTube videos, documenting my journey into collecting. That's what my channel is all about. Nostalgia, my collecting habits, my personal growth or whatever. That's what it's always been about. And um, so, yeah, all these channels back then, they were all about that. They were about collecting. Nobody was talking about value. Like, some people would say, like, oh, it goes for this and this, and look at this deal I got at the flea market, you know, this goes for 20 bucks, I picked it up for 2 bucks, you know, and that was, like, nice, you know, that's, that's what people were comparing um, the stuff they buy to. They're basically like, I got a hell of a deal. Not, hey, I got a hell of a deal, now I can make money on it. And that's what YouTube has become, for the most part, not everybody. But for the most part, people are just talking about the value of the crap that they bought. And they're like, oh, this is an investment, you know, investing with Hot Wheels. And all these channels are talking about like, oh, you should sell these now. Oh, you should hold on to these for a while because they'll be more valuable. And I'm like, dude, what the hell are you collecting for? What are you, what's your point of collecting? You're, you know, yeah, all right. So you have these and you like them. Sure, that's great. But, you know, you're looking at corners, you're looking at the, the things, and there's a crease there, and oh no, I get it, for your collection, you want it to be like that, that's cool. But, like, that's not why people are looking at the condition of things anymore. They're looking at the condition of things because it affects the value. That's messed up, man. And that's what I mean, like, back then I was watching uh, a lot of retro uh, YouTube channels, like retro video games and stuff like that, I was heavy into that. And, and vintage toys and all that good stuff. Uh, I still love all that. I still have a small collection of all of that, but not nowhere near. It's like 1% of what I used to have. Uh, just the extreme essential things that I have in my collection are things that I either had as a kid that totally bring back nostalgia and I want to play those video games. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about this, but you know, um, I just wanted to vent that because those channels used to go out, go to the flea markets, uh, go to like trade shows, uh, swap meets, whatever. And, uh, you know, they would find stuff that sparked nostalgia, spark, spark memories. They would have fun with their friends going shopping. That's why I'm not, I never name YouTube channels or YouTubers or collectors. I never have, never will. There's a lot of scumbags that do that where they like call people out and say their names and they try to like bury them or, you know, discredit them or, you know, um, just tarnish their reputation. Those people are scumbags, man. Like, I would never do that. Never have, never will. And, uh, but I will talk about those types of YouTubers because... It was nice to watch these guys go out hunt for stuff that they want and you can see it on their face that oh my god you know like I found I found this Super Mario 3 or Super Mario whatever you know for the NES and I used to play this all the time with like my grandma or my friends or whatever it's like Soul Calibur 2 on PlayStation 2 for me that was a huge deal in my life I used to play that every day with my friends after school or whatever you know, we all get together, toke up, you know, and uh, play a bunch of uh, Soul Calibur 2, and we got really good, especially me and my best friend Chris, man. We got really good. I mean, he got so good, he would play with his feet, and he would beat people's asses just playing the controller with his toes. That was fucking impressive. But Chris, if you're watching, dude, you should, uh, we, we need to uh, do a little Soul Calibur 2 rematch. Uh, but yeah, man, we both got really good to the point to where like the game would glitch because we were fucking going so quick and uh, That's why I have two copies of Soul Calibur 2 and a PlayStation 2 so that I can relive that sometimes with my friend But it'll never be the same because you're not you're not a kid anymore or a teenager uh, It's a different time. You know, it's not you can't buy your childhood back You can only kind of get things to remind you of those warm times you had back in the day because, uh, yeah, you can't bring back the past, man. Uh, so, yeah. 
so yeah, I used to watch all these channels and just really enjoy these guys go through memories and tell stories and, you know, like, watch them build their collection and have, like, uh, you know, all these games on the wall behind them or action figures, you know, that they had as kids and they were, like, really happy. And then slowly over the years, which is natural, I guess, uh, you know, they got everything they they wanted to get. And now they were like kind of like stuck either making videos on YouTube or they were just like completely, you know, uh, um, what do you call it? Completely overwhelmed with it and they were addicted now. And they're like, well, I've done this for a few years now, collecting things, you know, uh, going to flea markets and I'm used to it. It's a habit. And um, now they didn't really know what to do so they became resellers and they would buy things to get that one rare video game you know and they would buy a lot you know like lots someone getting rid of like a big old you know bin of their collection they would buy that keep the ones they want and those would those would end up being free to them because they would end up flipping everything else that they got because they already have it or they don't want it uh so yeah that's um you know, it's normal, it's natural. I've done a lot of things. Uh, a lot of my collections in the past were free to me because um, that's what I would do. I would buy a bunch of stuff, keep the stuff that I want, and then sell stuff at a little bit more of a markup because when you buy a lot, you know, it's uh, a lot cheaper. <laughs> a lot is a lot cheaper. So uh, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good way to uh, build your collection and make it free to you, to where you don't waste any money. But it requires a lot of work because you have to resell it, you have to do stuff, you have to pack things, you know what I mean. So, so yeah, uh, so slowly all these YouTube channels started to morph into that. And they're like, well, we already have everything we want, you know, so uh, it's kind of pointless for us to either make YouTube videos about going to the flea market and looking for stuff and blah, blah, blah. A lot of people that used to be strictly video game collectors uh, became toy collectors because they're like well there's nothing else I can do now so I'm gonna start collecting toys and the cycle would continue and blah 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 you know and I've done stuff like that as well so uh, and slowly all these channels changed and now honestly I, I watched some old videos of some of these guys from eight years ago nine ten years ago and I was like oh my god that was freaking awesome like I loved watching these videos and you know then I'll compare them to their new videos and they're just so like these guys are different now and some of them that were completely all about pure collecting are now completely about pure reselling on whatnot or eBay they just go to these flea markets yeah they still go with one or two of their friends they used to go with but pretty much everything they get is to resell it they'll give you the value on the screen and they're like oh my god guys look I picked up this thing and you know uh, again picked it up for five dollars and I'm reselling it and the value on eBay it goes for two hundred dollars you know yeah you can believe that oh I got all these Nintendo consoles today for just a hundred dollars and I'm gonna make like eight hundred dollars and I'm I'm watching this and I'm like ew <laughs> like all these channels turned into reseller channels and all you're doing is watching these guys buy stuff to sell it most of the time they don't keep any of it any of it so i've actually unsubscribed to a lot of them i still like check in on their channels from time to time because of nostalgia like those channels became nostalgic to me because uh you know I used to watch them and it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of those good old collecting days back then. And I'm not bitching again, guys. I'm just giving you an observation. That's just how I see things, how they changed in just 10 years, man. And, uh, and it's awesome because, yeah, it did change. And, yeah, a lot of YouTubers are responsible for it becoming such a big thing because a lot of viewers started watching their videos and they wanted to experience that for themselves or they got inspired to hunt nostalgia and re you know like recollect things from their childhood and i totally get that and um you know there's nothing wrong with any of it i'm just saying that i really miss those people and those videos about people just going out there having fun buying like a bunch of for example nes games for two dollars each 
and being happy when they get home that they, you know, scored these awesome things from their childhood and they would actually play these games with their friends. And, uh, you know, now everyone's, you know, pretty much from that era or in their 40s, you know, and, uh, you know, they have families and they don't really have time to have that kind of fun. And it's all totally understandable, dude. I'm not judging any of them. I'm just saying, like, I, I don't want to watch someone's reseller journey anymore. I don't want to watch these people just go to these places, buy stuff up and tell you how much more profit they made. Uh, going to these markets and selling it to people that somehow have money to spend so much of this money on their, you know, on their childhood or their hype, you know, or just to invest in things to resell them so they can, you know, have money. So anyway, I, I've never really done that. I always had jobs that paid for, uh, for my living and, uh, or my art or my filmmaking stuff, you know, side gigs and stuff like that. So I never really worry about being a reseller, even though I've done it before at flea markets for retro stuff. So yeah, all right, we're here at Acme, guys. Let's, uh, let's get the case of water and see if they got any Hot Wheels and uh, we can call this a day. If I see Wiley Coyote, I'll let you guys know. Boo! No, there's uh, one case shipper here. Oh good, it's half empty. So yeah man, restocks are coming. Very good time to uh, buy choice, not hunt, because they will be having stuff this week. Holiday season, man. All right, nothing there. There's also a pegboard right here. Let's see. Yeah, that's all picked through. Most definitely. They did have another case in here. I see some new things. But uh, nothing worthy. All right. Okay, guys, achievement unlocked. We got water, we got poop sand, we got laundry detergent, and everything else I showed you. Ooh, all right, that's it for today, guys. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed today's uh, conversation. Um, this was a pig hunting vlog that I have uh, been doing for a while. Um, yeah, just had a bunch of those thoughts, man. Really miss those channels. I uh, really, really don't like how it's become, you know, tainted with just reselling YouTube channels. Uh, I really, really enjoy the smaller channels that I watch these days. I love the, like, 100 up to 1,000 um, subscriber channels because those guys are still showing passion. They're still showing, you know, their love for the hobby. They're showing, they're playing with stuff. They're playing with their kids and their Hot Wheels. Uh, they're talking about, the, oh, this model is this. I like it because of this and that. Or, you know, they're customizing them and, um, you know, selling them or whatever. Uh, or giving them away. Uh, I love that, man. Because that's that's a true collecting community. When people are finding stuff uh, on the cheap, they're happy about that, or they'll buy things that they can share with their fellow collectors without making money. They're either trading or, you know, like uh, giving stuff to each other for free, or if anything, they'll like mark it up one dollar just for the trouble or a couple bucks, or if someone just sends you something, you send them money back as a thank you without them asking for it. Um, you know, stuff that normal people should do, stuff that normal people should understand. It shouldn't be told to you that if someone's being kind to you that, you know, maybe you should be kind to them, you know. Uh, it's never expected, but, you know, um, I've had a few people that bought stuff from the auctions in the past, and I've sent out a couple of super treasure hunts to them or, like, really hard to find things. They never even, like, uh, got back to me or said, hey, man, thank you for the super that you sent for me. And that was just me thanking them for participating in the auction to help Ukrainians. Like, I gave them, like, a $40 or $60 super treasure hunt as a thank you because I didn't want it. Uh, you know, I've done that to a bunch of people. So it's it's kind of weird how some people's mentality works. You know, they're almost, like, entitled to or, like, they're like, well, I donated $10 to your cause. You know, I deserve this $50 super. It's interesting, you know. Uh, again, I, it's totally cool with me. Uh, I don't need a thank you, but you would think, you know, 
there's a lot of people that did reach out to me or post on their Instagram saying like, oh, Nas sent me this, thanks, man. They tagged me in it or on their YouTube channel, you know, they, they said stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's weird. It's weird how people are. Uh, there's a lot of self-entitlement. There's a lot of uh, different things happening with uh, YouTube channels and YouTubers nowadays. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's become a bit tainted, and that's why like you know that's why I wanted to do this challenge. See who wants to take the challenge, see who can last one week without peg hunting, and uh, I just think it would be fun for people to reassess uh, their collecting journey and maybe learn a little bit of something about themselves. You know, see who controls their collection, <laughs> them or the collection controlling them. So yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, guys, my my only message, uh, you're takeaway should be from everything I've rambled about is uh, you know support each other uh, you know value value each other you know um, love people use things uh, the other way around is not right those of you who are into minimalism and stuff you know exactly who says that and stuff like that I didn't think of that but I really love that motto love people use things because the other way around doesn't work man and uh, yeah so yeah uh, everything I said, think about it. Hopefully, some of it resonated with you. Hopefully, you didn't get offended. Definitely, I'm not trying to offend anyone. Just giving you some of my thought processes I always do. And, uh, yeah, I've been changing a lot about my YouTube channel, a lot about my collecting habits and what I collect, how much I collect. And, uh, just wanted to share some of my thoughts and, uh, my journey with y'all. <laughs> So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, that was it. No more pig hunting until uh, next Saturday, uh, the 16th of December. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys take the challenge and uh, find out about yourself. Peace and love. Live long and prosper. Later. Brah.